Hello, welcome to my studio. Uh, as I mentioned in my last vlog, I've just got a little over two and a half weeks until my upcoming solo show. And because this show is, is gonna be featuring the stained glass as well as my traditional stuff, I'm just gonna be doing stained glass uh, paintings right up until the show because I need more of those. Now there's been a bit of a problem with the stained glass pieces. While I love the outcome, they are taking me an inordinate amount of time, about three times as much as my traditional style. So that's a problem because I can only spend so many hours in front of the canvas every year. If it's taking me three times as long, that's gonna cut my earnings in a third. So I have two options, uh, three options actually, when it comes to the stained glass pieces. So I can charge two or three times as much. I can decide that these are not something I really wanna pursue because I'm actually losing money when I do them or I can try to figure out a way to speed up the process. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna spend the next two and a half weeks trying different things um, that I think will help me speed up the process so that I can get the duration of these paintings down at least close to, to my um, typical style. So stick around if you wanna see uh, my first few thoughts on this. So I need to speed up the time that it takes me to do one of these stained glass pieces. So the first thing to, to kind of solving any problem is, is to ask like, why is it taking so much longer than my typical work? And there's a couple reasons for that um, that I've identified. So one is that typically I have been blocking in the composition in oils um, and then going to work right away on painting the, the colored shapes. So that causes a couple problems that when the paint in my brush touches these dark lines, it picks up the dark paint and it dirties my brush. So I'm forever having to clean my brush, uh, clean that dark paint out of my brush. Um, and the other thing is I'm having to pay really, really close attention, trying to stay just up to the edge of the lines so that I don't get the black in my brush. Or when I do go over it, then I have to correct it by wiping off the paint and repainting in the black lines. Um, so it's like, well, how can I address that? So the answer there is pretty easy and it's actually the same sort of process that happened with my more traditional style. Initially, I used to do the block in, the dark block in on my traditional um, paintings with oils so that I could make corrections because I was still kind of feeling my way around how I was going to do this. Um, and that's what I've done up until now with these pieces because I've had to be making a lot of corrections because I'm not sure exactly where I'm going or how the process um, is, is going to work. But I think now after having done a bunch of them that I'm getting more and more confident with the initial blocking of the actual line work. So the one thing I can do that will fix both of those kind of things that slow me down is if I can block it in an acrylic because then the paint will be totally dry, which I've done on this. So this one I've blocked in an acrylic. Now I don't have to worry about getting the black paint mixed in with my colors. I also don't have to be super, super persnickety about staying inside the lines because I can come back with a Q-tip and wipe it off and it's not gonna wipe off the black paint. It'll just leave the black paint there. So that's two things that I can do. Now I also have another option when it comes to this that I may end up using down the road on bigger pieces. And that is to do the initial line work in oil and then set the painting aside for several weeks, make sure that it's totally dry and then come in and work in the oils again. Now that will, still, that will give the added benefit um, of it being dry, but that means I still have to wait for that black uh, to dry. But I may end up doing that down the road depending on how complex the piece is. And there's two other things I've identified that, that could probably speed up the process. So one of them is I'm really spending a lot of time in doing a very careful blend from one color or tone to another within these shapes. Um, and I remember back to the very first few little sketches that I did of this. I did two 12 by 12 sketches in the course of about two hours. 
but I was much more loose and painterly and less concerned about getting that perfect blend. Um, and so that's one thing that I'm going to try and just see if I do that, if I loosen up a little, does it detract from the overall look of the painting? If it does, then that's not something I'm willing to do. But if it doesn't, then that can help speed me up. And then the other thing, I haven't really done it in this piece, but I'm going to do it probably in the next one, is to simplify the actual number of shapes that are in an actual piece, the number of shapes per square foot, if you want to say it. So by having it, because I know it's much quicker to paint in big shapes than these tiny little shapes. So those are all things I'm going to be working on kind of just in general to try and speed things up. And then one final thing, where I do the glow of the sun, that takes me a number of um, times of coming back in to lighten it and lighten it and lighten it even more. Because in one coat, I can't get it down to the white of the canvas over top of this red. Um, it needs several applications of paint. But what if I lighten this with acrylic and kind of gradate it out wherever I'm going to have the sun? That will probably make that um, doing of the glow uh, much quicker and be able to do it in one go. So that's what I'm going to try here too. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I'll come back when I've done that. But I've already kind of decided that I want the glow of the sun kind of in here. Um, but I'm going to put that in and then I'll come back and show you what I've done and then I'll actually start on painting in oils. Okay, so now I've taken white gesso and I've done kind of a gradation from almost pure white out away from the area of the sun. And I've done that in, in gesso on top of the acrylic. Um, now, I don't wanna go ahead and paint on that right now because that white potentially is gonna create a jarring kind of difference in the way that the colors appear. So what I have to do is come back in and soften that. And I'm going to do that using fluid acrylic and I'm going to glaze over top of this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come in with nickel azo yellow, which is a very, very bright, intense yellow. And for this, I'm using a soft uh, bristle brush that's meant for acrylic for doing glazes. Um, and for this, I don't want the paint to dry in the brush. So with my stiff bristled brushes, I don't mind that happening because it gives me a tool that I can use later on. Um, that's not the case with these. So with these, you want to be sure that you wash them right away. But you also, to prevent that paint from drying in the brush, it's a good idea always to wet the brush first with water um, and then just kind of remove the excess and then it will take longer for that paint to dry in the brush when it's already wet. If you put acrylic into a purely dry brush, it will start drying in these fibers that are up close to the ferrule really quickly. But if you've already wet the brush, there's that extra dampness in there that will keep this from drying out too quick. Okay, so now I've put that on here. Um, and the next stage that I have to do, I'm going to take a hair dryer and dry this, and then I'm going to glaze back in with the uh, quinacridone crimson to kind of merge those two things together. Um, I should also note when I did the um, with gesso, that was three applications of paint, drying it each time with a hair dryer first. The other thing you need to know about when you use a hair dryer, you want to give it a minute or two for the canvas to dry because if you go in right away once you've dried it because the canvas is warm or hot that paint will dry immediately so this is something that's going to take me this probably only take me 10 minutes total to do this um, but i'm hopefully if this works out that will save me a lot of time down the road so i'll come back when i'm when this is dry and i'm ready to glaze in the uh, the red okay so that yellow's dry now i'm going to come back with the quinacridone crimson just going to dilute it a little bit with water. And this is where having been a watercolor painter really helps out the ability to, to do a gradated wash, um, which is what I'm doing. I'm doing a gradated wash from the outside in all the way around. Okay, so that's still a pretty harsh line. Now I'm going to come in with an almost dry brush. It has just a little bit of water in it. And 
soften that gradation even more. So you can see my lines have disappeared um, underneath, but I'm not concerned about that because I could, that's a pretty easy thing to redraw with the oil paint when I come back into that stage. But I'm going to be redrawing them not with a black, but but with a uh, a very light yellow, um, and then into the reds, and then gradually gradating out to that black. Okay, I just want to do a little bit more around here because where that white is, it's showing kind of pinky and I want it to gradate right from that same red of the rest of the background into this. Now I could get even more involved and come in here um, with an orange, um, but actually maybe let's try that. Let's mix a little bit of the yellow, nickel azo yellow in with the red to make like an orange and draw that into the center. Okay, so that's kind of given us the effect of the sun that I want uh, in the background. And so from now I'll let this dry and I will re-wet this whole thing with oils, with the uh, water-soluble oil, and then I'm gonna come in and paint. So I'll come back to you after I've done some of this to let you know how this is working. Okay, so I'm about two hours in now, and I've got the sky area all done. I've got the glow of the sun pretty much resolved, and I've got the one tree started. Um, this is actually a pretty good time. Usually a 12 by 12 in my traditional style take me about four hours. Um, and this is kind of on track to maybe be around there, maybe five hours. Um, so if I can get that time down to, to kind of this speed, then that makes this a, uh, a much more viable option for me going forward and continuing to do these. Um, so I'm going to continue working away on this and I will come back when it's uh, finished or at least when I'm finished for the day. Well, something's come up, so I'm going to have to uh, call it a day here in the studio. I've got some other things I've got to deal with, um, so I'm going to end the video now. But I'm uh, very happy with how this is going, and this is actually coming along quite a bit quicker um, than the typical stained glass ones. Uh, so tomorrow I'll get on this and finish it. So, um, yeah, if you enjoyed this, give me your thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, uh, share the uh, Share the message with your friends. Let them know about the channel. Um, and as always, I welcome your comments and questions. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.